What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. This morning we're up at Letchworth Motor Auctions for their classic retro and performance sale. This is the last one of 2023. Now I'm joined here by two lovely classic Fords, the Escort RS Turbo and the Mark II XR2. Let's have a look around these and all the rest of the classic cars that are here today and see what they go for when they go under the hammer. Right, let's kick this auction off with this 1987 Escort RS Turbo. This is the Series 2 model. This Escort RS Turbo is showing 117,000 miles. One thing I really do love is the Recaro seats. I really love the red pattern on them. The description states that the Escort has been subject to restoration at some point in its life. And you can see where some panels have been painted and some haven't. It will need further restoration, as you can see on this roof. It's very faded. That needs some paint for sure. Here is the 1.6 CVH turbo engine. I've had a quick look around the engine bay and there's been a couple of repairs made, one in that corner, and the battery tray has also been repaired, which is a bonus for someone purchasing this Escort. As you know, them common spots that it usually rusts in are repaired. The Escort certainly would benefit from a bit of tidying up though, this overspray on a lot of the parts here in the engine bay. It's said to be running and driving, and it does come with nearly a 12 month ticket. It's got MOT until November 2024. Overall, I don't think that is a bad example of an Escort RS Turbo. It could do with a bit more work to get it to show condition, but yeah, it'd make a nice project for someone. The estimate here at Letchworth Motor Auctions is 12 to 15,000 pounds. Moving from one classic Ford into another, this one being a 1959 Ford console which is presented in lovely condition. One thing I do really love about these is that front bench seat. It's said that the console has only had two owners from new, and they say it could do with some TLC on the outside, but it's a good usable classic. The console has covered 171,000 miles and is presented in this white over black color theme. I'm really, really liking the classic white wall tires. I've just opened the bonnet and the first thing I'm looking at is that glass washer bottle, proper old school. Now this would have originally came with a 1.7 engine, although there's no paperwork with it, it's apparently been upgraded to a 1880cc engine. The current owner has owned this console for 12 years and it's always been stored in a heated garage, comes out in summer to attend what I can only assume classic car shows and to have a nice ride out. Anyway, it's really good to see such a old Ford still on the road. And the estimate at Letchworth Motor Auctions is seven and a half to 10,000 pounds. At 7,300 pounds, last chance, 73 bid, all finished, all done, it's here with me then, at 7,300 pounds. Here is the next classic in this Cavalier GLS sports hatch. It's a very 80s interior in here, proper bold and blue. Now this is a 1980 Cavalier. It's in remarkably good condition and this will shock some of you guys. It's got genuine 33,000 miles on the clock. They've got all the MOTs back to 1984. We all love a original dealer sticker, proper cool. Now this Cavalier was off the road from 2005 to 2021 and in 2021 someone decided to get it back on the road and spent over two grand getting it up and running again. Overall I'd say the bodywork isn't too bad, I've been having a good look around it. The roof and the boot have been sprayed but yeah overall that's looking nice. I've just popped the bonnet to the 1600 GLS and there is the heart of the car looking in reasonably good condition. It's saying to be running and driving well, and it does have MOT until October 2024. 
Something I've just spotted whilst reading the description is this tax disc. I wonder if that is the genuine tax disc from 1980 or whether that's a replica. Anyway, I think that's a really cool classic Vauxhall with some low mileage. The estimate is four to seven thousand pounds. Next up, we're going to be looking around this 1992 Mark III Fiesta XR2i. As you will see, there is a Mark II Fiesta next to it, so we'll have a look around this first because this one is a little bit worse for wear. As we take a look inside the XR2i, the first thing that strikes me are these wing back seats. I think they are really, really cool. Now the mileage is showing 12,000 miles, but it's believed to be 112,000 miles. The classic chrome petrol cap has drawn me over to this rear quarter, but that's not the only thing that's drawn me over to it. The paintwork on this rear quarter is absolutely shocking. It's had a lot of paintwork done in different patches on this car. It does come with a aftermarket Scorpion exhaust and it doesn't have the correct alloys on it. These alloys are off of a Mark IV Fiesta, but as you can see, just a lip around the body kit looks pretty rough and it doesn't actually line up properly. You've got bits of trim still sticking out. So yeah, this needs a lot of TLC. As we dive into the engine bay, we can see the 1.8 ZTEC engine and it's just covered in body shop dust. As you can see, it's just, yeah, it's, it's not too nice under here. I think it's had a quick paint job. Yeah, it just hasn't been tidied up under the bonnet, which is a bit of a shame. I'm not quite sure if the camera's picking it up. I think it is. Half of the radiator is actually red. You can see there, that's just overspray. Now, one of the headlights is sitting really nicely, but this other one's tucked in. I think it's got a couple of lugs broken on that because, yeah, that's pretty loose. It said that the XR2i is running and driving, but the brakes need some attention and it's also out of MOT. It's fair to say this one's going to need quite a bit of TLC, but for the estimate of three to five thousand pounds, this could be yours. At 2050 goes away, 2050 bit, I'll be done with it. At 2050 man, yes or no, 2150 bit. At 2150 goes away around online. 2150 bit, provisionally sold in the room at 2150. Provisionally. Anyway, we'll leave that Mark III XR2i alone for a minute and look at this stunning XR2 Mark II Fiesta. This XR2 was first registered in 1989, the last year they made the Mark II Fiestas, and it's covered a warranted 58,000 miles. It's only had four previous keepers and is described to be in superb condition inside and out. I've just opened the door to the XR2 and honestly, this is in such good condition. This really has been looked after. And look at them seats. There's literally not a blemish on them. The bolsters are nice and intact. So I've just been lucky enough to start up the XR2. Ah, oh, listen to that purring away. It honestly sounds so nice. I'm sure the immaculate condition will continue under the bonnet, but let's have a look. Wow, yes, very, very nice. There is the 1.6 CVH engine. Now, a very common place for these Fiestas to rust is the inner wings along there. This one's got, hmm, not quite sure what that is, maybe an aftermarket alarm system in that corner there. But yeah, it looks so, so clean and solid. Oh, talking about solid, you can't really see it here, but this has had a patch on the inner wing. Not the nicest, but I wouldn't say it's been the worst repair. Maybe a bit of filler could tidy that up, but at least you know it's been repaired. Yeah, this XR2 really is something else. It comes with its original book pack with six service stamps up to 58K, including a cam belt and water pump change at 52,000 miles. Also comes with loads of MOTs and previous documents. The sunroof doesn't look like it's got any rust around that. Hopefully it doesn't leak. You've just got to pray it doesn't, but being in this great condition, I don't think it would leak. 
Now this does have MOT, it's on the road and it's MOT'd until November 2024. But yeah, I'm not really in the market for an XR2, but if I was, this certainly would be the one I'd be bidding on. One last thing I just wanted to touch on is a Perry's dealership sticker in the rear window. It's also got a Perry's badge on the boot and still got some Go Perry's branding on the number plates. Anyway, I could drool over this Mark II XR2 for ages, but we've got to move on. The estimate is 15 to 18,000 pounds. So let's find out what that goes for. Starting it off, I've got commission at 13,000 pounds at 13,000. Low mileage XR2 at 13,000 pounds. All finished, all done. It's here on commission at 13,000 pounds. What do you think? Moving from one hot hatch to another, this 1995 Renault Clio Williams II is in lovely condition. Presented in its sports blue with the contrasting satin gold wheels. What an iconic colour scheme. As we enter the interior of the Williams Clio, it looks lovely. It's covered 126,000 miles. And the differences from the Williams I and the Williams II are very minor. But this too does have electric adjusting mirrors and electric windows. One feature I especially like in the Williams Clio is all these little dials. You've got one for oil level, one for oil temperature and one for oil pressure. Now fitted under the bonnet is a two litre naturally aspirated four cylinder fuel injected engine. This is based off Renault's 16 valve 1.8 engine but it's got larger valves, a more aggressive camshaft. One thing I do really like about these Clio's is the arches, the fact that they're just slightly wider on the back and the front. Yeah, kind of gives it almost a Nova look. The Renault does have MOT until July 2024, so a reasonably long MOT ticket. It was declared a Cap D insurance loss back in 1997. I tell you what, I really do like that Renault Clio Williams and the estimate is six to eight thousand pounds. I think that's really reasonable money. Such a tidy and iconic hot hatch. Yeah, let's see what that goes for. Six five bit in the room is six five now, six six on not. Six 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 seven, six seven, six thousand seven, six thousand eight, six thousand eight bit, hundred six thousand not, six thousand nine bit, seven thousand pounds, seven thousand pounds, seventy one bit, at seventy one, seventy two. Selling it provisionally all done this time at seven thousand two hundred pounds. Provisional all done. There really is some stunning classic Fords at this sale, and this Mark V Cortina is no exception. This is a 1980 Cortina GL. The colour is Cordoba beige, and it has brown cloth interior. Now the mileage is going to shock you once again with this. Apparently, it's only covered 11,000 miles. 11,000 miles. That is crazy, and it's warranted. I really do love the brown interiors on the classic Fords. They just work so well. Look at the door cards. They look like they've just come out of the factory, didn't they? There's not a single blemish on them. And as I go around to look at the door shuts, yeah, there is nothing wrong with them at all. And no sign of rust on the arch, which is always a bonus. The description states that they're led to believe this Cortina has had a earlier restoration. I mean, it's still in lovely, lovely condition, but some parts have had a bit of paint. Wow, just look at that. Here is the 1.6 Pinto engine, said to be running and driving. Yeah, really, really nice. You can tell it's had some bits of paint here and there. Uh, don't get me wrong, a couple of bits could do with tidying up, but the overall condition of the Cortina is very, very presentable. Just having a little look at the boot floor and that is in such good condition as well. No ripples or nasty dings in there. It's covered by this really nice protective lining. Oh, what a clean car though. Now there is a bit of a story with the Cortina. It's said that the vehicle was gifted to its first owner as a retirement present from the Ford dealer that he worked at. 
But after he sadly passed away, the vehicle was parked up by his wife and for many years was left in a garage. The auction can tell from the MOT history that the vehicle spent about 12 years off the road between 2006 and 2018, so must have had a recent recommission back into life and on the road. Overall, I think that's a stunning Mark V Cortina with such low mileage. Now, the estimate for this, it might shock some of you, it's just six to eight thousand pounds. Now, I don't think that's personally a lot of money, but you guys may disagree. Let me know what you think of that price in the comment section below, and we'll see what it goes for under the hammer now. Five two, five three, five four, five five, five six, five seven, five eight, five nine. 5,000 Let's have a little look at this Mini. This was first registered in 2000. It's a Rover Mini Cooper Sport. Let's have a look inside of the Mini. It's described to be in good overall condition and it's covered 72,000 miles. It's had four previous keepers and it comes with a good size history file showing 12 service stamps. Here is the 1.3 Rover engine. Now this had a time and belt and water pump at 54,000 miles. Looks in presentable condition once again. I do really like the front ends of these minis, especially when they've got four big spot lamps on the front. That looks proper cool. And straight to the back of the mini, I really do like the central twin exhaust as well. It's finished in red and it also has the silver roof. The stunning little Mini Cooper is on the road and MOT'd until August 2024. Now the estimate on this is eight to 12,000 pounds. Here's a classic that we haven't seen at an auction recently. This is a 1974 Volkswagen 1300 Beetle. Now this green colour is very striking. It's Porsche Viper Green. Very, very nice. This Beetle was restored back in 2009 and it's fitted with these custom Recaro seats. They look like they're out of a old Ford or possibly even a old Vauxhall. A very fitting sticker on this rear window which says classic not plastic. The Beetle is also fitted with these EMPI alloy wheels. Wow that looks so nice with a big rear chrome bumper. Anyway let's have a little dive into the boot and have a look at the engine bay. Here is that 1300 air-cooled engine. It's the original engine and gearbox which was serviced just 300 miles ago. The Beetle is now MOT and tax exempt. Unfortunately, it doesn't come with much history um, at all. Not really got a history file, so they can't warrant the mileage, but it is showing 33,000 miles. I guess you could try and go back on the old MOTs to gauge whether that is genuine or not. Anyway, I think that's a lovely classic and it's been restored just to my taste. The estimate is four to six thousand pounds. Two, two, minute, two, three, minute, two, three, two, four in the room, two, four, the minute, two, four, two thousand five in, two thousand five took in the room first, two thousand six, two thousand six, two thousand seven, three thousand two hundred, thirty two one mid order, thirty three, three thousand three hundred back, at three thousand three bit, we submitted a bit of thirty three, thirty four, thirty four bit of three four, provision selling once, twice, all done at three thousand six hundred pounds. The low mileage cars really do keep coming. Now this is a 2003 Citroen Saxo, so probably a future classic. It is a VTR. Now this only has 11,000 miles on the clock. That is crazy low. Not only has it got the super low mileage, but it's only ever had one keeper. That's crazy, really is. As we look inside the interior, it just looks so clean, like it just, generally looks like it hasn't been used. Yeah, that is proper cool. It's described to be in very good condition inside and out. 
One thing I usually look at is just the door shuts and also the locks. Look at that. It just doesn't look like it's been used. It's still showing the zinc plating on the bolts and the lock as well. Very good condition. Here is the 1.6 Citroen engine that's fitted to this Saxo. This has undergone quite a lot of recent work, including a timing belt change, water pump, it's had the brake fluid changed, it's had the gearbox oil changed, all the brakes apart, cleaned up and re-greased. It's also had the full undersides cleaned up as well. I've always loved these alloy wheels that come on the VTR Saxos. Also comes with four matching Avon tyres. That's just a, a nice little nod to say that the car has been looked after. The Saxo comes with two keys and a good history file. Now the estimate, this might shock quite a lot of you, it is seven to nine thousand pounds. Quite a lot for a little old Saxo, but that low mileage, I don't think you'll be able to find another one. Another star of the show at this sale for Letchworth Motor Auctions is this Sunbeam Alpine Series 3 GT finished in this lovely baby blue colour. The description states that the bodywork has been extensively restored back in 2019 and is said that since then it's barely been used. The mileage is reading 15,000 although that's not warranted but just look at that wooden steering wheel and the whole length of the dash is in wood as well. I'm not quite sure if this has been re-trimmed I assume it has because this leather interior looks stunning. It also does come with a hard top. And there is the 1600 GT engine, which is just fired into life. There's also lots of history and documents to come with the Sunbeam, including over £10,000 of receipts for paint, maintenance and parts. And a nice little touch, it's also sold with the VSP66 number plate. You can tell it's a proper classic because it's got some wire wheels, very nice, with the tiny little white wall on the tyres as well. It's also said that the Sunbeam has featured in Channel 4's documentary, David Jason's Secret Service. It needs a little bit of work. It needs some electrical work and recommissioning to investigate why the overdrive has stopped engaging. But yeah, what a lovely, lovely car. Well, there you have it, the 1963 Sunbeam Alpine. The estimate is nine to 12,000 pounds. Now what I'm looking around now is this Ford Escort Finesse. I believe this is a bit of a ULEZ survivor. Maybe they're selling it because of the ULEZ zone, but at least it's not being scrapped because it has only got 37,000 miles on the clock, which are warranted. The Escort comes with 18 service stamps, also comes with two spare keys and the all important red master key. Looks in good condition in here. Overall, the Escort is in fairly average condition. There is some bubbling underneath this spoiler that could do with some attention, but yeah, looking around it, it's got a few dings and scrapes, but overall condition isn't too bad. As you can see on this wing, there's a few naughty dings, but one thing I do really like is these alloys. Here is the 1.6 ZTEC engine. I've just been having a browse around the engine bay and it looks in fairly good condition. Not a lot of rust going on. Now, unfortunately, this Escort is just out of MOT. So it ran out of MOT just before the auction sale. So hopefully someone could get that through an MOT and back on the road. As you can see with this front bumper as well, 
and would need spraying, but overall, I think that would make a really good run around for someone. It's a cool retro Ford with the estimate of 750 pounds to 1500 pounds. I think that's a nice little bargain there. 500 on bid, 550, 600, 650 bid, and 650 pound bid escort to 650 bid, and 700 pound bid, anyone else has 700 pound bid, then we submit the bid provisionally, all done at just 700. Provisional bill 700. Next up, we're looking around this 1966 Triumph Herald 1250. The Herald is described to be in good condition, and although it doesn't need an MOT anymore, it is MOT'd until August next year. Look at that, very nice. It's got 50,000 miles on the clock, but that isn't warranted, so it's more than likely going to be 150. I've just lifted the front end of the Triumph up to reveal the 1147cc petrol engine. This must be pretty easy to work on. Everything is exposed as soon as you lift that front end up. It's said that the car comes with a large selection of maintenance and parts invoices. It also comes with two spare keys. Overall, I think that's a really nice classic for someone. Now, the estimate is five to seven thousand pounds. 42, thank you, sir. 43 minutes. Talk about a lot of car for the money. Here we've got a 2000 Jaguar XJ8 Auto, which is showing 80,000 miles. Just jumped in the side of the Jag. Nice cream leather interior. Headlining is a bit saggy, so that would need to be addressed. Now it's had five previous keepers and it's on the road. It's got MOT until July 2024. It does really look quite luxurious though for a 2000 car. These must have been well ahead of a lot of other cars. I've just opened the bonnet to reveal the 3.2 litre V8 engine in there. Now with the sale, it comes with service book, two sets of keys, receipts and records of maintenance and servicing. It's said that the bodywork is in average condition. As you can see, there's loads of swells all on the paintwork. It could do with a, a good detail and machine polish. I think this would come up a treat because that blue looks like a really nice colour. Anyway, just going back on to what I said when I first started looking around the Jag, I think you get a lot for your money because this is only estimated 1,000 to 1,500 pounds. Like, you're getting a 3.2 V8, which is on the road till July next year. That's crazy money. One thing I have just spotted, it's a little bit of rush to the front wing here. So maybe it'll need a couple of wings, but yeah, that's a lot of car, isn't it, for that sort of money? Wonder what the tax would be on it. Maybe that's killing it. Seven hundred pound a box. Seven twenty-five on the net. Seven twenty-five bid net bidder. Seven twenty-five. Seven fifty new bidder. Seven fifty bid. Seven fifty bid quicker, please. Net seven fifty bid. At seven fifty pound goes. Seven fifty still provisional. All done then at seven hundred and fifty pounds. Provisional net seven. So I've just come across another Ford Escort, this one being a 1998 Escort SI 1.8, and this is a three-door model. Now this one is on the road, it's got MOT until February next year, so a little bit of a short MOT, but it is on the road, so that's a bonus. It's covered 83,000 miles, which is warranted. Just coming to the rear arches of the Escort, it looks fairly clean, might need a bit of tidying up in places, but it is on the road, so how bad can it be? Anyway, I'm really liking this colour. This is charcoal green, a colour you really don't see that much anymore. Here is the 1.8 ZTEC engine, 16 valve. Having a quick browse around here, looks in half decent condition. It's said to be running and driving well. But overall, the bodywork on this Escort is a lot better than the silver one we looked around a minute ago. Now, the estimate for this is 1,500 to 2,500. I think it's that slightly more desirable model. It's also a two-door, so, oh yeah, I'll be really interested to see what that goes for. 1150 bit, 1,200, 1,200 pound, 1,250, 1,250, 1,300, 1,390 bit, 1,350. Front of the whole 1,350 bit. I'll be all done the shore, it's provisional then, at just 1,350. Next, I'm looking around this 1973 350 Mercedes SL, big old barge, 
but unfortunately it is starting to see some pretty bad signs of rust. It's really starting to show the rust on the sills coming up onto the wings. And one of the worst bits I've seen is this bit on the front wing here. That's probably gonna need the whole wing replacing. Couple of sills to get this back looking, well, half decent and solid again. Mercedes is showing 95,000 miles, which is warranted. Very nice interior, all black leather. I've just opened the bonnet to reveal what I believe to be the 3.5 V8 engine, which is said to be running and driving. Obviously this car is tax and MOT exempt, but I'd personally get them rust issues dealt with before getting it back out on the road. I won't focus on the rust too much longer, but one thing I do love is the color-coded hubcaps. They are very nice. It is being sold with that number plate as well, so that's gotta be worth a little bit. Anyway, the estimate at Letchworth Motor Auctions is seven and a half to 10,000 pounds. Well, what a brilliant morning spent at Letchworth Motor Auctions checking out their classic car sale. Now I have left this outro a couple of days to film because quite a lot of the cars were going provisionally and I wanted to see which ones were going to get bought and which ones weren't. So I now know the final figures. Now, a couple of cars I'd like to touch on. The two Mark VI Escorts, I thought they were both bargains, they sold in the end, and that Jag sold for just under a thousand pounds. Really is cheap as chips. Another car that sold was that Saxo VTR. That went for over seven thousand pounds. But, find another. I don't think there would be another one with that low mileage in that great condition. I thought that was a stunning classic or a future classic as some of you may call it. It was nice to see that stunning Mark V Cortina sold as well, but unfortunately the Mark II Fiesta, that XR2, didn't sell. It only reached 13 grand and I think they were looking more high ends of the teens, sort of 18, 19,000 pounds. So yeah, that was nowhere near um, what the XR2 was worth or what the owner wanted for it. But overall, it was a great auction. Even though there wasn't that many lots there, I found myself just filming loads of different classics and there was quite a few different makes and models in this video so I hope you guys enjoyed that selection. As always a massive shout out to everyone at Let's Earth Motor Auctions for being so welcoming and allowing me to record the auction. I really do enjoy visiting there. If you're wondering when Letchworth Motor Auctions have got their next classic retro and performance auction, it's on the 9th of March. So you've got a bit of time, stick it in your diary, and if you're free on the 9th of March, head down to Letchworth Motor Auctions for another classic car auction. Anyway, that's about all we've got time for in this video. If you guys want to put in the comment section below what your favourite car of the auction was, I'll be really interested to know. Now, if you did enjoy this video, please give it a like, and if you like what you see, subscribe to the channel to see more. Thank you all for watching, and until the next one, I'll see you guys later.